What's up, what's up, what's up, man? We back again like a motherfucker rain checking this bitch, motherfucker. Fuck y'all talking about, man. It's any and everything podcast by two King. I'm King DJ. I'm King Perez. And we back, bitch. Fuck y'all talking about, man. Make sure y'all tap in on all platforms at any and everything podcast by two kings. Make sure y'all hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, motherfucker, TikTok. Uh, YouTube. Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Twitter. Spotify. <laughs> no, we don't have a Twitter. We ain't got no Twitter yet. Well, make sure y'all tap in, man. Yeah, before Twitter. we go, no, no Twitter. No, we ain't got no Twitter. I don't know. I don't fuck with Twitter for real. For real. I don't know how to work them tweets and shit. <laughs> That's too much time. Too much all yeah. all day. That's all day. We don't, <laughs> man, our our man. Hell no. Fuck all that shit. <laughs> Say no. But before we slide anywhere, before we go anywhere, man, that was that rocking or drop it, rocking or drop it. Make sure y'all hit those polls. Make sure y'all tap into those Facebooks and, and, and vote. That was Ill Will Party Pack. Ill Will Party Pack. So y'all know we're going to hit that again at the end of the episode for the uh, for us leaving up. But uh, before we get into anything, interviewing him and talking to him, you got anything to say, my brother? Shit, I'm been, How about say we've been gone yeah. for a while, dog? Yeah, man. What, what was the week, weekend like? Mm, I, my, I, enjoy, <laughs> I enjoyed my weekend, man. I always enjoy myself, dog, but, you know, that's every weekend, man. Like, we outside. We right? always outside. <laughs> you know, we already talking about, we, you know, let them know about this goddamn uh, pop-up shop, man. We right. we going to do some you know shit this summer, man. Yeah, we definitely we, we going to do some shit this summer. this summer. Networking yeah. like a summer of a bitch. Yeah, buddy. But uh, let's get into my guy. His guy, our guy, and he our guy, we his guys, all that type of shit, man. My man's P like to say, each one teach one. And y'all know I like to say intertwining intertwine communities, man. That's where our culture become his culture, or our community become his community, and his community become our community, and we all become one big happy motherfucking family, because that's all we need, right? Yes, it's fucking sir. unity. And bringing in March in laughing, my guy Crystal Ball, Christopher Ball, the comedian, and he got to tell us everything that he got going on, what he doing with himself, and how he rocking what he going on. You feel me? So go ahead and talk to my peoples about uh, what you got, man. Hey, everybody. What's going on? My name's Cristobal, the comedian. Uh, I want to give a shout out to not only one of my comic friends, Fago Red. We're running the room at Baker's Keyboard Lounge, a place that's known for mostly jazz music. We flipped it. Let now. them know we, where that's at. We are uh, eight miles Illinois. Like, yeah, boy, I told y'all you'd be in the D, man. I'm all in the D. I'm from Southwest plan. Detroit, so you know me. I'm not just not white, but I'm not originally from the suburbs. <laughs> I got a lot of hood in me as well. Yeah. I've got my black card. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do that every Monday night at 8 p.m. at Baker's Keyboard Lounge, right on the corner of Eight Mile Illinois. Uh, mm. Show is only usually ten dollars, five dollars parking. Yep. We're some funny motherfuckers. I, agree. I tell people you want clean comedy, fuck you, you can go watch Disney Plus because we bring it raw and real <laughs> when we talk about what we talk about. So do they do um, amateur? Up no, up? no, we do showcases. We have a headliner say. once a week, okay. and uh, myself, including a few others, we drop in and we we do our thing and we make sure everybody's entertained, and have a good time. Yeah, what's comedy to you, man? Like, what's what? What do you feel like is comedy? Comedy so, could be so many different. Uh, Outlets, you know, uh, myself personally, I'm an R-rated comic. I don't go as clean as a lot of my other colleagues. Everybody to each one, teach one. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in there should be any censorship in comedy. I agree. Um, right. I believe in like free, uh, free speech. And when you're in our environment, it's what we're talking about that we want to get across to our audience. And we know we're not going to satisfy everyone. Right. right. I mean, because no matter what you do, not everybody's going to be satisfied regardless. So... I'm that type of force to be reckoned with that I speak my mind because in order to be comfortable, you have to be uncomfortable. I, I agree. And me, a lot of times, predominantly, I run black rooms 
And I just, I'm a force to reckon with. I'm like that Hurricane Ian that should have fucking took out <laughs> Donald Trump's palace in mar largo but it didn't. Mother Nature Mother. only had one job and you fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what started doing comedy? Or my, no, before we go there, how yeah. long you been doing comedy? I've been doing comedy professionally on and off, probably I'd say about mm, 12, 13 years. I took Large a break gravity. for a while because it's, it's uh, not only is it a great release mentally, but when you come across other people, entertainment industry, which I've been a part of for years, mm -hmm. besides comedy, uh, there's going to be times where you have either what's called writer's block, uh, you get some type of blockage, and you're not as successful as you once mm -hmm. were. It always helps to be current with a lot of information as well as what subjects people want to talk a lot about. Now, I'm that comic. I would touch base on a lot of subjects that a lot of the comics will and tell you exactly my perspective of how I think of it. Mm -hmm. You just have to realize how you're receiving the information, whether it's going to offend you or you're like, man, that's really some deep stuff that he's talking about, but he has the guts to do it. You and ever offended me, somebody? It's me, that person. Have you ever done stand-up and offended somebody in the crowd? In the crowd or in the industry in general? No, in the crowd. I've done both. Uh, a lot of times I don't fuck with my, a lot of times I don't fuck with my audience, but they know me a lot. If they want to pick on me, I don't mind getting picked on because I, I got that ammo for your ass. You're gonna be hearing all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna do it professionally, but I'm gonna cut into you just like you could get cut into cheese. Very smooth, it's gonna hit you quick. And you're gonna realize what the hell just happened to me. That's fire, man. That's fire. But I always love engaging with my audience. They show a lot of love. Uh, I break the ice with no problem. So, you know, I, being involved in entertainment. At different plateaus, whether it be film, TV, music videos, I've done it all. I've worked with a lot of professionals in the industry. I can tell you good things and bad things about the mm -hmm. industry, but right. in the bottom line, it always work is work, and that's just how I bring it. That's what I enjoy doing the most. So how do you feel about the industry? Because we done had, tapping into sidebar, we done had conversations outside of what we having right now. You done right. spoke on how you felt about the industry, but let's bring it, let's bring it to the forefront to our community I mean, this ain't. I mean, you ain't said nothing that's going de that's detrimental to nobody. So we can not talk that yet. Shit. Um, <laughs> sometimes I bring up that certain, motherfucker is coming. Sometimes I bring up certain things. It's a hot topic. I do a Def Jeffrey Dahmer joke. Some audiences like it, some don't. But I still get my point across. It's a true life event. What happened? Mm -hmm. It's irrelevant. What happened? And I try to add a different style of it based on my comedy and how to implement it into a joke. Not necessarily is it always going to be funny, but mm -hmm. it's going to be memorable. It, or, or a punchline. Exactly, yeah. or a punchline. Like out of, the, um, out of the, a lot of places that you go, do you think like Detroit is like one of the most reality based to do comedy in? Especially like, you know, when you look at the color line and you figure white comedians, black comedians, um, as far as yeah, my guy stay, he ain't white, you know man. Well, there's a difference for sure. Black rooms, like a lot of comedy, mostly dark, that's edgy, mm -hmm. that shouldn't be uncensored. A lot of white people in the audience like a little bit more of the cleaner stuff, not using so you many other so? motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, a lot of people get offended by that. Stuff. I would think that more <laughs> white people is dark comedy than... Not necessarily. <clears throat> they, they, they don't like the motherfuckers as much. They don't like the bitches. They don't like the cunts. A lot of, a lot of oh, words okay. that the general okay. people say, See, I was a lot of them hold back that, because they don't want to hear that stuff. And it's mm -hmm. like, when you're in our environment, we tell you the trueness of what we feel like or what we're experiencing, not necessarily to offend someone, but get a point across. Right. I feel like jokes don't have a color, though. I'm saying that that um, exactly. Mostly jokes should be yeah, universal. There's that Detroit crowd, you know. Detroit. Oh, I love my Detroit audiences. Yeah. Detroit Have you ever performed anywhere like, outside of the don't. Don't. Yes, we um, don't give a fuck in Detroit. Most of the times like, they don't. We not. We not that. You know. You can't really butt hurt us. You know. What yeah. I'm we don't. I mean, we are a hard, a hard group of people for sure. Just like Philly, just like New York, mm -hmm. compared to areas like. You know the the Palo Alto Mountains or the Calabasas mm -hmm. of New York, or excuse me, California, the White Plains of New York. But when you go to like Harlem, Philly, Detroit, Baltimore, we're mm -hmm. we're really acceptable with a lot of darker yeah, material. We think everything. I just about say exactly. we don't we exactly. don't really take shit because exactly. I love a motherfucking <laughs> joke. I love you, a motherfucking exactly. joke. Boy. Sometimes the more edgier it is, the more the more I laugh. It's gonna <laughs> laugh, or you're gonna be like, wow, that's some true shit of what's really going on. <laughs> I was about to say because you go either think about it later or you gonna laugh. Like exactly. But uh, so like we said, man, you do you do comedy. Yeah. Because I don't want to I don't want to glaze past the fact that you just said you was in films. Exactly. So you can't glaze past exactly. that. Exactly. So, 
Nah, how do you feel like? Cause we we big on uh guys that that do both that can be in movies and do stand. Oh, being versatile. Yeah, basically so what it is. how do you feel like the borderline of acting and film art is? Well, acting is something that you have to practice your craft a lot more than comedy in ways I think because it's not as natural. However, acting is not as hard as people think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I just watched a recent podcast that. Uh, Damon Dash is on, and he was talking with Steven Jackson, mm -hmm. the former NBA yeah, player that yeah. we know a lot of uh, from the Indiana Pacer days. Yep. And he said he, <laughs> he wanted to be an actor. And Damon Dash is like, you really want to be an actor? Then just act. Mm -hmm. So he's like, well, I'm nervous. There's a lot to it, this and that. And he's like, no, it's not. Just do it. He was like, you got cameras, right? And so basically what it is is a lot of people, they think too highly about it. They get overwhelmed, mm -hmm. which causes nervousness, where I believe in, I walk in faith every day. And I believe in when you have faith behind you, you could be fearless. And no matter what audience you're in front of, what group it is, you just have that level of confidence and you're willing to, to put it out like a lot of people don't. Right. Uh, one of my fortes I do is called comedy parodies. I wrote R. Kelly's 30 Year Sentence scene. Maybe I'll play a little bit of it later, do an acapella. It's called <laughs> I Believe I Didn't Lie. Where I perform <laughs> this is mostly a black room. And I'm talking about a black artist, but I grew up look, looking and listening to a lot of his music. I appreciate his formality of art because mm -hmm. art is art, but a lot of people don't see it that way. And I just do my thing. Once they see me do my thing, they're like, wow, mm -hmm. not only is he fearless, he's confident, but the way he carries himself, they know not to fuck with me. And that's how I come across with most rooms I'm in, whether it's a black room, white room, Jewish room, Chaldean room, comedy's comedy. It's universal, just like mm -hmm. movies. So what gave you the confidence, though? Like... What like, gave me the confidence? What gave you the confidence to be able to say whatever I want on mic? <laughs> no, no. Yes. <laughs> but whatever the fuck you want to say in front of a group full of black people, knowing like how they could react. Well, the thing I I see about it mostly is I have to see. Because I see your shit. And to me, you yes. fucking funny. Thank you. Which we I all said you funny. That's I why I'm clear you here. And then if all the time. your confidence come, is. Yes. Mm -hmm. It should come across to my audience. And doesn't matter if it's five people I'm speaking in front of. Or a hundred people I'm speaking yep. in front of. You're going to get the same from me just about every night. Unless mm -hmm. I'm a little under the weather. But I'm still going to push it. Because you want to be entertained. And that's what our job is to do. Is to entertain right. you. That's a fact. That's a fact. I, I, you know, I look at it like, you know. What the fuck do you come to a comedy show for? Exactly. If you're going to get offended. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? You come to hear some funny shit no exactly. matter what the fuck it may be. Exactly. You, you never know what to expect. Mm -hmm. The you thing know? I like about it the most is it's a great le release for me personally because, like I said, it's therapeutic. In order to talk about other people, you first have to be comfortable talking and embarrassing yourself with any right. audience. And no matter what the subject is, That's I could true. be like, I'm glad I'm not the only one here black. It explains mm -hmm. my other three inches. I see that <laughs> mostly in front of a black audience. For me be not being black, to be able to deliver that and make people right. laugh with the form of confidence I have, it's right. like, wow, this guy's something else. Right. That's just how I come across to a lot of my audience. I mean, you know, you break out like that, they definitely don't want to hear it. Yep. Exactly, know, exactly. The rest is I also want to give a shout out. I'm part of Tony Roney's Crack Jokers. We do shows every fr uh, excuse me. Yeah, every Friday and Saturday mm -hmm. at 8 p.m. West Side of Detroit, right off of Plymouth Road see? and Southfield Freeway. See? My dog get a D, man. Y'all better stop playing. And there's only like three of us that are not black, but I love them at like a family. Um, Tony Roney's been known in the comedy business even longer than me. And uh, he used to do um, sets of bees, didn't he? I believe bees so. And, 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 and also, Southfield. And Southfield. Yes. Uh, and then I also work with Cornell Popcorn Spivey, another right. funny motherfucker. Yeah. These guys have taught me some things that I didn't know about, how to elevate my game, because no matter how you are in the industry of comedy or entertainment, you're not as good as you think you are with every other project you work. Yes, mm -hmm. you could be a Denzel. Yes, you could be a Will. Yes, you could mm -hmm. be uh, a Dane Cook, whatever. But you're only as good as your next performance that you do. Right. And the thing about a lot of comics that bother me is they have egos. Mm -hmm. They're the prima donnas. That's a fact. You guys know who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. I'm still going to speak yeah. I'm not going to say any names, but you know who you are. And, you know, you shouldn't have no ego. You evolve around other comics because they teach you mm -hmm. every day how to get better. Like say, or I teach people how I do what I do also. Because yeah, I listen to, you know, like, I'm old school. I listen to comics like, you know, Red Fox. A lot of the ones who I grew up with, yes. Um, Richard Pryor. 
you know, them guys. George Carlin, Sam Kennison, Dave Chappelle, George Carlin, Lenny oh, Bruce. Oh, God damn. I think we're going way back. Them dudes was like the dudes that didn't give a fuck. Exactly. They came to work. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Look, you know what you came here for. I'm going to say what the fuck I want to say. <laughs> and it's a exactly. done deal at the end of the day. You one of the hot, or you don't. And one of the hottest comics right now is Eddie Griffin, who I just seen a couple months back. Thank you. And I want to give a shout out, Hulk the Comedian. Love you, guy. He's on tour right now with Eddie Griffin. Uh, he was in his hometown, South Carolina, which I will be going to one of these days or so. And other areas I want to hit very soon mm -hmm. is Newark, Chicago, California, Texas, and uh, I don't know what other else places. You were just thinking think about the tour, the Southwest tour, man. Let's yes. talk about that. Yes. What's up? Um, the congratulations South first before we but tell we them why we congratulate. Oh, where I grew up in Southwest Detroit? Mm, or what? You said the, the comedy. Oh, yeah. You um, go to the second round. And I want to give a shout out to Michael Muse with Good Helpers Heating and Cooling. He's running a competition besides his business. It's called Midwest Comedy Competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It takes place Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. inside of the Birmingham 8 Theater. But I believe we're wrapping up our final rounds and we're going to be moving on to the next round. Your boy Cristobal right here advanced to the next round. You know how I'm going to come. I might tell a joke, I might do a voice impression, or I might mm -hmm. come with that song. Hey. Nah, because I was just about to go from the films to the voice impressions. Now, nah, you say you do voice impressions. Yeah, I do about 30 different voices. One of my first voices I started growing up doing as a kid. You know, when you're, when you're growing up in Southwest Detroit, for one, we don't have a lot of money. Uh, we're hood broke, <laughs> you know, especially my father raising three other kids. And we just made ends meet, whatever we did. Uh, we lived about 15 miles from downtown. Uh -huh. And... Uh, I just had a craft of just making funny voices and trying to make my brothers laugh, let alone maybe annoy my father and mother. And it came out good. <laughs> One of my first voices I've always done was Mickey Mouse. And I don't know if it's from watching the TV shows or just I knew I was different. You can't do no Mickey Mouse. Your voice too I can do a Mickey Mouse. Your voice too do. You can't do no Mickey yeah, Mouse. I can do a Mickey Mouse. Even though I'm a little bit hoarse right now because I sing also, I'm going to try to do a little bit of Mickey Mouse for you since I'm getting caught and put on the spot. Yeah, when, I'm actually, when I'm actually at Disney, Any, I do everything this. podcast. I grab baby. the microphone from the bus driver and there's a lot of kids on board and so this is what I say. Oh, come on now, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Disney World. It's a very fun place, and I'm sure you'll have a great time. Like I said, it's a little bit raspy right now, but that's a little bit of taste right I there. Hear so who you go from? Like you said, you do 30. What's the 30? I ain't going to have you do all the 30. Uh, I could do Elmo. I could do Bill Clinton. I could do George W. Bush. Uh, I seen Mike Tyson a few months ago, and this is what I wanted to tell him, because I'm good at doing Tyson's voice and uh -huh. still working on it. So this is how he sounds. You know, you know, I'm a great fighter, you know, 19 years old, I'm world champion of the world, you know. But sit down and fucking knock me out, but you know, I'm still a champion of the world, you know. Gus Kutama taught me how to fight, you know. <laughs> Stop making fun of me. I got my own weed business, and, you know, I'm just having a lot of great fun, you know. This is life for him right now. That's Mike Tyson right there <laughs> That's for you. definitely uh, Mike. <laughs> this, my man's love Mike, boy. That's a Mike fan next to you, so he... Yeah. <laughs> That's why he was over there dying, That's boy. Dude, right there. Who else we do? Man. So um, what got you into the impressions? You uh, what got me into the impressions? So being a kid, being a kid, yes. like because you did say being a kid, you know, being funny. And we had a very uh, diversified crowd. Right. I grew up with a lot of black friends. For sure. I'm part Hispanic, along mixed with other races, including white. Uh -huh. um, we had like one or two Indian kids. Uh, and a, oh, oh, I'm sorry, mostly Polish kids. I forgot because we're mm -hmm. right in that community yeah, yeah. in Southwest Detroit. Believe Southwest it or not. is like a yeah, real melting pot. Yeah, it's like a melting pot, yeah. like New York City. Yeah. You know, the week in Southwest Detroit. Yes, that's over there off Chope and McGraw. That's my that's my neighborhood. So I'm like Damn, that's I'm right in my neighborhood. How the hell did you know where my neighborhood was? It's a it's block it. from Chancey High School. I, I was spent the week over. I was doing some work and I was on Chope and McGraw. Yeah, I spent the whole week. <laughs> that's over. my neighborhood. It's like. When you enter Southwest Detroit, it's like you enter into like a, a different yep. culture world. Uh, yeah, because you got to go across that bridge and smell that smell, man. That shit stank over there. <laughs> My neighbor could either be black, Polish, Jewish, Indian. The We're house is so close. Yep. Yeah, you ain't got no... It's like another ham trap. <laughs> yeah, basically, it's, yeah, it's like a ham trap, yes. Yeah. I like being meth that's shooting out of there, though. I say that slap, man. That that was a big up for the Southwest because that put Southwest on the... Because Southwest is a part of Detroit. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah but, but they they hold their own perspective. Yes, yes. You know, so we kind of like separate them. The, the, we, this Detroit talk, this Michigan yep. talk. Mm -hmm. for the, we do have a following outside of Michigan. Yep. Thanks to y'all. But this, Welcome this Michigan everyone. talk. <laughs> but, you know, with BMF 
coming out. I oh, feel yeah. like that sold a whole... Fifty made that show hot. Yeah, where man. Where people from Detroit could have did that show themselves. <laughs> and like, uh, I got, you know, my brother from over there, Big Gub. Yep, you know, yep. Um, Gub been repping Southwest Detroit for Forever. the longest. Forever. Um, Southwest he does, native. He does all types of stuff over in Southwest to keep, you know, mm-hmm. keep Southwest alive. Because a lot of people, you know, over the years, you know, looked over Southwest oh, Detroit yeah. Till you know they still till they start having uh Cinco de Mayo, yeah. And then a lot of people started coming into that area, yeah. And you know, but Southwest has so much talent coming out of that, that untapped exactly, talent exactly. that people don't know about. So, not only was it being funny, but you know, in my younger days, I used to play sports, uh, I was a bad kid growing up. Mostly in public schools, I was that type of kid, and we made slingshots out of coat hangers, mm-hmm. and we throw rocks and hit the buses oh, as they went down on McGraw. Yeah. And so my parents got tired of me or so, and they put us and rolled us in Catholic school. So shout out St. Andrews, even though you've been closed. I was still a former student of that place. We were Catholic students. We had to wear motherfucking blue dress shirts, blue tie with black or blue slacks. That was our uniform, and the girls had their skirts or their jumper outfits. So, Mm -hmm. you know, people say, you know, are you really from Detroit? Yes, I lived there about 15 years of my life. Um, I'd never forget it. I'm glad we grew up, you know, because it wasn't the the nicest neighborhood, but the fundamentals of maybe who I am today. Mm -hmm. And I always come back to my hood. Even though I live in the suburbs now, I always come back to the hood. Mm -hmm. No matter if it's east side, west side, it don't matter. It's it's all love always in Detroit. But it it changed over the years. Oh, yeah. Being in the hood, then to being in the hood now, (laughs) it's totally different. What is it? It's integration now. Oh, yeah. We got out out when cocaine started getting hot. (laughs) (laughs) We'll get right on the subject, you know. I almost got recruited by YBIs when I was young. And it was time to move out. We ended up moving to the, the suburbs. And there was actually some black people out there in my school, Woodhaven, shout out, Woodhaven Warriors, my old neighborhood after we moved out of Detroit. Then we went to other a few places in the suburbs. So But I actually I grew up listening to a lot of hip hop, not the bullshit you hear these days. You know what I'm talking about, whether it's Kanye, Little Drake, whoever these people are. It's not the old style. I grew up, whether it's Run DMC. Oh, so you going, you going, I'm going 50 years back. hip-hop. Yeah, you right. going 50 years hip-hop. Melly Mel and Fat Five and the Furious Flash. Yeah. Uh, Kumo D. Uh, Eric B. and Rakim, of course. This this off this off the he ain't even opened up his notebook so you know he's speaking <laughs> off the heart bro yeah. so don't tell my man he done walked in but he walked in he say hey you pee I got my black card bro <laughs> <laughs> it never be revoked <laughs> yeah boy I rocked with you man I told you man I said I said you gonna come on here and you say yeah man like I I definitely appreciate yep. it. oh no matter of fact before we go any further I. We doing the pop up shop. Let them know about that because right. before we continue to talk about what what we want to invert you into that. Okay, because we're doing pretty much like a comedy pop up shop. Okay, that's what it is we want to get you know vendors to come out and you know promote you know what they do. Okay, and you know give it out to the people. Plus at the same time have the comics come in and you know do their thing. Okay, you know kind of like bridging. This network, because that's, that's what we do. Our okay. community, our network, we like to make it stronger. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know? And every time we do an event, we like to put people together that's, you know, in the same business. Okay. Or, you know, might be in different business, but the network is yeah. exactly, exactly. make it work for them. Whether it's know? community, art, right. fashion, all yep. work together. Because yeah. we always feel like somebody got something to give. Mm-hmm. Always. And it's always got. new you know, new business ventures. Some people sometimes, you know, be undecided of what they want to do. Exactly. You know, they're they're on the fence about it. Mm-hmm. Then you get, you know, other people that's already going through this. They give you that motivation to be like, okay, I want to, you know, put my foot in and get my business started. You know, what I'm exactly. saying now I got the know how and I got the help to do it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to that pop up shops. Probably have a lot of other comics, possibly including myself. We'll bring that funny to you. Get to see a lot of people, the works that they do, the arts that they do. It's all community love. You know, there's a lot of talent, believe it or not, here in Detroit. We always yeah. say Detroit is coming back. Yeah, Detroit's been back for a while. Yeah. A lot of people think we're going silent. No, we're bringing the force to be reckoned with. New York, you got your competition because we're some hard people. Yeah. Uh, Chicago. Atlanta, Chicago, Atlanta. You know. L.A. 
We 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 in that we in that talk now. Exactly. From music to to art, to film, to technology. Yeah. yeah. We're doing a lot of good in our city. Our mayor just approved some things that are happening. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going to be going on downtown at the Central uh, Train Depot? Yeah. It's now been taken over by Ford. Yeah. Which is bringing other businesses, and uh, there's, it's going to be a lot of things on the come up. Yeah. And I tell people all the time let <clears throat> let Detroit be. That learning block for a lot of different cities, a lot of different states, as far as you got to look at Detroit the way we are. We mix and match with everybody. Exactly. Yeah. If you live in the city of Detroit, you know, you got assholes and we know... We know assholes from assholes. Exactly. But when it comes to assholes, the, no assholes. Right. Time. When it comes to the like the color barrier and people getting along, you know what I'm saying? If if the system can keep people fighting each other, <laughs> exactly. And shit, they want that to happen. And you know, arguing and shit. They figure that the people will never work together to accomplish anything. Exactly. They are trying to divide us, but we're we're staying together. Because the system is basically keep them working. Keep them arguing. Exactly. We make more money. Exactly. And they steady fighting each other. But they don't realize before. we have our own hopes and dreams. The job that we have is good, but trust me, we're not looking at just that mm -hmm. one outlet for a, a form of income, form of income. or so. Because right. we're some funny, talented motherfuckers, very creative, and we know what it takes to be able to advance to that next level and not be held down. And see, that's the difference with our city because we can go work. An eight-hour job, get off that job, and, and be ready boom. to work on something else. I'm an auto mechanic. Exactly. I'm a hair technician. Exactly. You know, I'm a painter. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm a fashion I'm a, I'm designer. I'm a contractor. <laughs> we got so <laughs> many. We got so many different uh, hats that we wear. Right, and you know, it, it all works together. Exactly. You know, that's what I'm saying you fact. see, you see the people get together and they vibe. You go in the room, you know, and I don't see this in a lot of. Different cities that I go to, but you go into a room in Detroit. What's up, Cam? Welcome something. to the podcast. <laughs> they, they have every fucking body. Exactly, in the room, exactly. You know? So, you know, that's the thing that's great about the Detroit community. Um, I want to give a shout out to Detroit House of Comedy, downtown, oh, yeah. a little bit down the road from Fox Theater. Tony Roney made us bring that thing. We did our comedy showcases a few weeks in a row, mm -hmm. been very successful, but they're moving on to other things. You know, other doors get closed, other doors open. So uh, we appreciate the opportunity. Kyle Forsyth, I'll give you a shout out. Putting us on at Detroit House of Comedy. If you never want, if you never been there, you need to get there. It's right next to, uh, excuse me, inside a hockey town. Really great yeah, room. Yeah, Mike yeah, Bonner's running yeah. that room now, but there's been other comics. Tuesday nights they do open mics, but I was featured in a couple other showcases. <laughs> and um, you know, Mark Ridley's Royal Oaks, well known spot. Yeah. It's been around for 40, 50 years. Brought yeah. acts like Bob Saget. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld and a few other comics well known where now it's in Detroit, the place is jumping. Every every week they got different comics. Give a shout out to my uh, comic friend Robert, uh, excuse me, Robin, Robin Gillian. Uh -huh. They run Hard G Comedy uh, shows that what they do. She was just uh, down there this past weekend with yep. uh, Indian uh, comedy artists uh, performing down inside of the House of Comedy. Um, Tony Roney, the next move they're doing March 19th. I believe it's at 7 p.m. They're going to be inside of the Performing Arts Center, which okay. is known as Michael Guido Theater in Dearborn. We have our Spring Comedy Festival coming up, and tickets are still available. You can reach Tony Roney's Comedy Vibe, uh, find out ticket information, or link me up on my Facebook or all my social media handles if you want to get tickets. That's uh, I think it's next week, March 19th. Oh, yep. There's a few after that, though. So. Because people always ask me, what do I think makes a great comedian? And I tell people from my experience, mm -hmm. what makes a great comedian, if I come to your show and you got some Chinese people there. <laughs> <laughs> Not just whites, but Chinese. Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> you got some Chinese people and your shit, I'll be like, that motherfucker yep. is great. Well, I mean, <laughs> do you ever see some Chinese people at comedy shows? Let's see. Hey, you got to be... You, you gotta be that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's been a few Asians, not directly Chinese though. You know, there's been the origins <laughs> close of the Asian culture. Right. 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 Yeah. Get enough. them, get them their respect, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> Believe it or not, my white people are showing up in black clubs. I told you, it's not that bad. Not all black people are bad. You feel uncomfortable, you feel unsafe. I'll meet you out in the parking lot in the hood, and I'll make sure you get in there. Hey, go walk you know, in. Come my on, thing man. Is, for years, I just felt like. White people don't give a fuck because I see white people at comedy shows all the time, exactly. man. They, they exactly. be that That's shit. They be like shit. 
Hennessy, please. Exactly. <laughs> White people do like Hennessy. White people do like cognac. <laughs> Two shots. They at home. They yeah. don't give a fuck. They just, they just like us. They want to have fun, man. <laughs> they they just, have I, mean, fun. I mean, shit. What, what, at what cost is entertainment? You know what I'm saying? Nothing. Ain't nobody hurt. Ain't nobody it's, dying. As it's, bad as the world's burning. Yeah. Shit happening now. Let's laugh, man. Police, police oppression, whatever else. You want to have a good time? You come and see myself personally. For sure. Every Monday night at Baker's or... A lot of other places they do comedy shows. The thing, you know? the thing about life, it's always great when you have something that brings people together. Exactly. You know, in this life, I'm tired of funerals bringing people together. Exactly. You That's know what I'm saying? So we we see enough of that shit. Exactly. I mean, bring bring some together while we all here. We all alive. We can all vibe and we can all fucking relate to. Because regardless of anything that happens in this world, we all go through the same fucking problems. Exactly. How no matter what skin tone you are. You know, exactly. but we, if you really break it down, everything that fucking happens, happens to everybody. everybody. Nobody is excluded, especially in this system. Nobody is excluded. Exactly. So, you know. Once you just we, turn yourself down. Yeah, once we get over that. You know, it got to be a black thing. It got to be a white thing. It's not. It's a people thing. Exactly. I will we, say we, we do have divider, uh, burial dividers, burial breakers, yeah. and and comedy is one, sports is another. So exactly. Yeah. You know, so we can definitely. So say you want to have a good time? It don't matter if you're black, you're white, you're Asian, <laughs> yeah. you're Hispanic, you're mixed with the races like me: Dutch, German, Irish, French. <laughs> Portuguese, Man, we bring Italian, we like everybody to you come got all of that shows. <laughs> no. My, oh, my, my father did it a lot, say, but not that many. I might say. He did tour in Nam, and I had an old joke that I no longer use because <laughs> it does offend that particular race. Uh, but I cleaned it up see. a little bit. Let's, uh, I ain't even going to say let's hear it. But we're going to say, uh, we getting into your par- parodies, parodies. Yeah, yeah. We're getting into your parodies. So you all right. You got a few of them. So you guys know who Weird Al Yankovic is. Mm-hmm. Not only was he Jewish with a badass perm worse than a black person wears, but... <laughs> He had a, mostly a lot of clean stuff. He'd do a joke about Michael Jackson, rather it's eat it instead of beat it. Right. Um, I'm wake, welcome to an Amish paradise instead of gangster's paradise mm-hmm. and so much other bullshit he created. Well, I'm him plus 2.0. I have the raw and real style. <coughs> I come with certain profanity, but it's going to be comical. It's going to be very joyful, and it's definitely going to be entertaining. And one of my hottest songs I've done a while back, while R. Kelly, believe it or not, got sentenced for his 30 years, <laughs> even though he shouldn't be the only one in prison because there's a lot of people Man. that linked up to him. And if you're watching, no matter who you are, you know who you are. He can't take the heat for everyone. You know, he there's shouldn't a lot take of other the heat people. For there's a lot of other people. I feel like all of the mo- all of the pain. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We'll talk about that. Yeah, that's and a uh, that's a whole different subject. Yeah. You don't have enough time for this, this podcast. <laughs> but um, you know, the entertainment industry it's it's uh, it's very it's very close minded. It's very exclusive. There's a dark side to it too. Yeah. But don't become part of that. Be part trapped into that because there's a lot of good to it as well. Yeah. And uh, it's just, uh, the thing is, I actually have seven songs to date. I'm going to possibly do ten, and I'm doing what's called comedy parodies. Uh, my version of the R. Kelly is called I Believe I Didn't Lie, uh-huh. instead of I Believe I Can Fly. <laughs> and I use the same style of music that he did off of his hot soundtrack that everybody knew everybody that gave him a Grammy. That. But my version is called I Believe I Didn't Lie. It's his testimony of why he didn't think he did the things that he did to put himself in incarceration. <laughs> uh, and then I got six other songs. Um, I do rock and roll. I've done R and B. I've done uh, a little bit of soul. I haven't done rap yet, but I'm thinking about working on something like that too. You might as well be the first to drop a. Uh, so comedy. I'll be the first comic uh, on your goodness. podcast show. <laughs> any and everything podcast by two kings yeah. that you're hearing this live. Yeah. And because my hottest one right now is R. Kelly's I Believe I Didn't Lie, so I'm going to do the first verse to you. They're not playing music. They put me on the spot, so I'll do it a cappella. I've done this actually Andy in two rooms scene too, so. in Detroit as well as the suburbs, and you're hearing it live. This is my <laughs> song. It's on TikTok. So if you come up with it, you change the lyrics, it's going to be very close to mine. Know that I'm the comic that developed and created it. So this is how it goes. I was in a Chicago hotel. People thought I treated women like him. I'm from Chicago, that is where I'm from. 
the place I call my only home, the home. If I didn't see it, sir, miss, did you see me do that? Then I didn't do it. If you believe it, why don't you prove it? I believe I didn't lie. I believe I didn't make those girls cry. Think about it every night and day. The prison system's gonna make me gay. I believe she was a whore. She's calling the police, now I'm running out the door. I believe I didn't lie. I believe I didn't lie. I believe I didn't lie. There's a whole entire song with that. That was the first verse of what you heard live here on their podcast ever done before. And I got a lot more other songs, so not only am I bringing the jokes, I'm going to be bringing the voices, and I definitely do the songs. Bringing the smoke. Hey, hey, you might as well drop you an album, my brother. Ain't nobody ever, ain't no comedy ever did that. And believe it or not, that was like R. Kelly's actual style, how he sings ain't, the song. Ain't nobody ever did that. You might as well drop you an album. Put See, all you thought I was white. <laughs> Boy, you'll be the first to do something like that. You ain't never thought of doing nothing like that before? Oh, yeah. I'm going to do it very soon. Yeah, man. That'll be <laughs> I'll be fun. on all musical platforms, rather be Spotify, yep. Apple, <laughs> um, some of the other ones I don't know. Right. But uh, it's, it's, it's me. Know it's going to be recorded, and they're going to be put it out, and hopefully uh, we get some success off the sales. And the name gets out, and uh, you know, looking forward to other things later in the future. Shout out to Mike Epps. He's opening a spot here at the old uh, Social Punch Bowl mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. He's going to be coming to town soon, even though he's from the Midwest, not directly from Detroit. Mm -hmm. but his spot's going to be opening soon. It's called, uh, I believe, Open Mike. Yep. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that, and I look forward to being on that stage very soon, yeah. too. I just went to the um, barbershop. I, okay. I got the Mike Epps hookup. You know, <laughs> I got my beard grow. I got the chicken you know, wings to go with it. Right. I'm working with the, you know, working with the fro and shit. I'm going to have my shit. Like, there you go. He's going to be tight. <laughs> there you go. You know, it's called a Mike. Mic up special. You go into the barbershop, give me, give me the mic up. There you go. Give me the mic up. They're going to you up. <laughs> so a lot of more about my history of comedy, not only from growing up in Southwest Detroit, um, I had three other brothers, and uh, my father would always tell me growing up, you just don't know when to shut your fucking mouth, do you? <laughs> Dad, I know you're rolling in your grave now. Much respect and love for you, but... You're right. I don't know when to shut up. I don't know when I'm going to keep my mouth closed because not only do I... What did your dad do for a living? Uh, my father, when he was alive, he worked as a laborer in Millwright at a Great Lake Steel, actually, in E-Course. You know, them hard-working fathers. Exactly, exactly. Always mm -hmm. gave you that real advice. Like, exactly. Hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you kids these days don't know how easy you got, including my son, because you got your ass whooped with a leather belt, an extension cord, a switch seat. The black families weren't the only ones did that shit. White people, Hispanic people, we did that as well. Uh, and I'm glad I grew up that way because I don't drop that, my pants. I was about to say, that, that's where you get it from. <laughs> you know, I didn't grow up demented or uh, dysfunctional like a Kanye West. Or, you know, I can name out some other people that uh, are like that. I mean, if you grew up with, like, if you grew up with a father that was hard working. Oh, very hard working. And they just didn't. They didn't take no shit and no. they didn't want to hear no shit. Nope. No excuses. And, and My exactly. son didn't realize how easy he has like, it. Or any other kids up, in the community man. these days. You no know, shit. Get you, it moving. You fuck, fuck it, you suck it, you move on. Yeah, it wasn't no in between. No. Nope. We ain't got time for nope. all these motherfucking emotional nope. breakdowns. Yep, these kids Get these your days. Shit together. These kids these days, dead, you're asking me too much, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> was like, son was nope, up. shut the fuck up and do it. See, then you got me. I ain't grew up with no father. Well, <laughs> yeah. I got it out the mud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, we it's get, a lot rougher. They be like, you know, we give you overwhelmed. Take exactly, this exactly. ass whooping right. Exactly. <laughs> this ass ass whooping was the cure for everything. Oh yeah. I'm sick. I can't get up. Yep. Oh, you might need an ass whooping. Hey, okay. get your ass up. <laughs> if your mom and dad didn't do it. If there was a neighbor or a friend down the street, All they right. knew what something happened. They called yeah. their ass up, and they'd be the one to give it to you. Yeah, you talking back back in the day? That was oh, really man. when it took a community to raise a village. Man, Ooh. nah, nah. Only the mama can raise the child. Well, that was that old neighborhood yep. watch. Yo yep. ass go, like, the real neighborhood watch. Over, yep. Be bullshitting. I'm about to call your mama. You be like, God damn. And, and they was on the phone with your mama. That slow walk yep. on. Like, cause yep. when you got home, you already know. Yeah, Miss yep. Jones around the corner called me. She told me what y'all was doing. <laughs> you yep. knew it was all over. I love you know, Miss Mary. That's, man, that was my, back in the day. That was, you, that was our Miss Mary. Mary. When you get fucked up, man. You get fucked up at the crib and you got to talk through 
talk to your friends all through the back window and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. back then, we loved to go outside. It wasn't no staying in the fucking house. That was a killer right yeah, there. Yeah, we'd always be outside till the, the lights came on. The street lights came on. And your ass on the porch after that, yelling yep. across the street. <laughs> all right, buddy. Say, yep. say, before, no, top five. Who your top five in comedy? Top five in comedy, easily. George Carlin. That, you the go, most, you, wait, are you going from five to one? No. Nope. In no Any, particular okay, order. Okay, These okay. are some of my best influences, the ones who spoke their mind, that were very controversial, mm. that believed in the way their message was supposed to be brought to their audience, and it's up to the audience. They decide how they want to dissect it, because even though no matter how much you want to sugarcoat the shit, it was real shit that happened back then. George Carlin, Red Fox... Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, Bernie Mac, Dave Chappelle, <laughs> Chris Rock. I know I'm over five, but there's been a lot of good influences. L- let me Lenny you, Bruce. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Do you think that George Carlin was underrated? And yes. Do you think that he's more popular after his death than he was when he was alive? In ways, yes, and in ways, no. The way I say yes is because... When you look back at his videos, because a lot of people, I grew up in the 70s, so I knew who George Carlin was. And he would talk about race. He'd talk about the war. He'd talk about politics. He talked about relationships. And he said truth, life, shit, what a lot of people don't speak on. Like a person like an Ed Sullivan or Johnny Carson. Oh, they want to cut it out. It's too edgy. We don't know if it's going to affect our audiences, Mm -hmm. but we're saying the shit that other people are afraid to say. And that's how it has to be said. This is not no media platform like a Channel 2 or Channel 7 where, you know, you could possibly lose your job because you offend your colleague or some member called in, even if it's on Twitter, and said something that was very offensive, even about the recent Grammys. You're not going to be able to please everyone, but you're going to say what you believe in, and the way they receive it is Mm -hmm. totally up to them. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be said regardless. And, you know, my thing with um, George Carlin, man, I probably watched all of all of his shows. Exactly. He was, um, he was real big at colleges. Exactly. Um, the thing about him is when you really watch him, you don't see anybody but a person. Exactly. Because the way he delivered, he has he has no really, um, no pause by it. Exactly. He tell you about <laughs> his life. He exactly. tell you about how he was an alcoholic. He yep. tell you about... How he was on drugs, yep. the shit that he did in his fucking life, and it's all fucking relatable. Exactly. Where a lot of comics these days, they try to sugarcoat what the topic is, and Will Smith, Chris Rock, I'm talking to you, <laughs> because <laughs> even though as controversial as the whole thing is, and the Chris Rock special, much shout out to that, good job of what you did, however, you weren't as edgy as like you could have been, mm-hmm. I think you held back on certain things because you're thinking about the audience yeah. and who it would affect. You should have spoke more about how you actually felt right. because there's going to be consequences. Rather, people receive it how they hear it later on or so. Right. I, th- I think it's so, more, so, um, so much based on when you look at comedy and entertainment today, it's based on you know the, um, pretty much what they're promoting. Mm-hmm. So if I got to deal with the Nike, brand. You, yeah, the brand. So everybody is... Looking at this uh, Kevin Hart. code of conduct. Yeah, Kevin Hart. Prime so example. if yes. if a company has a certain code of conduct to uphill and then they yeah. right, like, right, they violate, cross, yeah, they want to lose the contract with right that. Yeah. I mean, but it's their brand, though. You got to understand if it's, it's what yeah, they're it's chasing. They, it's it's they what brand, they feel like their end result is. I think they give up so much when they go that route. For the simple fact, everybody can't be a Dave Chappelle or Richard Pryor though. Yeah, it's like you can't keep it real. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing Cat Williams said. He was like, I own 100% of all my shit. Mm-hmm. I can say what the fuck I want. But everybody can't do that. Everybody so for the ones who can't. And to you met a person like me. <laughs> <laughs> because trust me, you are going to be uncomfortable. But, but that's after comedy, a while, though. you're going to get comfortable because I'm, it's I mean, relatable to your personal that, life. That's the thing. That or what's currently to, happening. They, i never seen the big push as I see it now to fuck with comedy. You want to know something? Comedy's never been fucked with until these last probably, About what, ten five, ten years. Five, ten years. Comedy's 
has been that threshold, nobody fucks with it. Comedy is comedy. Whatever yeah. you say in a comedy Because it's always been it's sports. It's comedy. It, that, it was always deflected off towards sports and entertainment. So how can Now you, they add comic, com- comedy to it. So how can you go back 2008 and, okay, Kevin Hart did a gay joke in 2008 <laughs> and I'm fucking offended. Who the fuck is researching this shit? Or Dave Chappelle, how he was talking about being homophobic, where he didn't truly say he was homophobic, but because of certain material he said, it offended a certain community. And I have gay friends, I have a lot of straight friends, I have transgender friends, whatever. And it's like, I'm going to talk about a lot of topics because you can't hide behind these. Whether it's your sexual orientation, whether you're racist, whatever it is, these things always come to the light. My thing is... In 2008, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I was getting fucking super high then. I was smoking <laughs> weed, probably drinking. I was fucked up pretty much most of the early 2000s. So I don't know what the fuck I said. Half of the time, I didn't know what the fuck I did. I hope so. I hope mean, did. <laughs> for somebody to come back and be like, hey, in 2008, you said that, you know. Well, no, the motherfucker made a tweet though, Pete. He put it on the internet or I some mean, shit. Oh, no, he said it in the, on the stand-up, right? Even, I mean, yeah, he said it was just Kevin Hart. That's, yeah. that's 2000 and fucking eight. So let me give you the difference between Kevin Hart, who's nationally known, and to someone like me that's still in the game, that wants to get better in the game, but isn't afraid to talk about what it is. Yeah. So I watch you if you want me to go ahead and say this. Mm-hmm. So Chris Rock had that special called Selective Outrage, and this past week I was at Baker's, Monday nights at 8 p.m., shout out to Fago Red. And when I talked about my set, I was like, you know, Chris talked about trueness and what he's talking about. But the whole thing of what brought this on was because Will Smith and Chris Rock have been friends for a long time. Yep. And I'm going to speak the truth about it. Jada's always been in the background. And even though respect to his wife, she just tries to control the relationship, tries to control what they say amongst each other. And that's not being a true friend. Because right. what he said, we know about this at Oscars about a year or so ago, he said, G.I. Jane 2 can't wait to see it. Originally at first, when they put the cameras on her, she laughed, he was joking about it. But when she thought more about it, she looked at her husband, Will, then she thought it wasn't as funny as it turned out to be. <laughs> And that's when he says, you know, what he said, uh-huh. which became well known. Keep my wife's name out of your goddamn mouth. But if you looked at G.I. Jane, you knew exactly what the fuck. Right. She lost about. her hair, you know, guys' well, dicks uh, go uh, limp. Uh, 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 uh. Black women lose their weaves. <laughs> Shit happens. So it make just... fun about it. <laughs> you know, I talk about my dick all the time and things like that. You talk about what, what is true. Because we're speaking the truth. This is not no media platform like Channel 2. we got to make sure we color it up because yeah. it's too raw and real. But what, what, what basically happened when I was at Baker's this past week is I said, you know, he did a good job. He went after Jada. It said bitch several times. And I said, you know, what I told him as well as what, what I said to my audience at night was, you know, Jada's just really fucked up in the head nice and dysfunctional at ways because maybe she had a rough childhood you know, maybe she wasn't loved by her parents as much, but the whole fiasco about the Jada, the Will, and I'm going to bring it up, Tupac is who she really loved, and that's part of the reason that she really <laughs> fucked up in the head, and I'm going to say it, and you haven't heard from another comic, I don't believe so, but Jada's just really fucked up because she's still having nightmares of fucking Tupac's ghost. And that's truly what I think happened, and she can't get over it even though she's married to Will, and I hopefully you guys are listening or fans of Will Smith, Jada Pinkett or Chris Rock, shout out to but what I told him, when I seen him at Fox Theater a couple months ago, I said he should have told Will Smith, Jada's career is done just like that bitch's hair. She'll be lucky if she gets a job with head and shoulders. Now, that's real talk right there. <laughs> What's your longest stand-up you ever did, man? How What's my long- longest what? Your longest stand-up. When I start talking, even though we're limited to like five to seven minutes, right. I don't fucking look at a clock sometimes. I just go with whatever comes natural or whatever I feel like saying. Like, you got the guys on the side of the set, like, shut it down. Yep, yep. Shut it down. Shout out to Gemini. You know who you are. Another comic friend of mine. That guy went raw and real. He talked about some true shit. Talked about some hood shit last week uh, at Baker's. Uh, this week's headline, I believe, is a guy named Top Flight. So mm-hmm. shout out to him. We'll be there at 8 p.m. 8 Mile Live Noise this yep. week, Monday. Every so Monday. If, so if I was an up-and-coming comic. Yeah. Where would I go, you know, to kind of like get my foot wet? Or where would I, you know, 
what what's a couple of spots I can hit to do, right. you know, test the waters. I'll, t I'll touch base on this. A lot of people think they're funny. And I tell people, if you think you're funny, come to an open mic. Right. But the thing is, you can't just listen to family members, because even my family members don't think I'm funny. Fuck you. <laughs> I got a lot of audiences. I would love your guys' respect and your uh, sign of appreciation, but I'm getting it from other people. And it, whether I'm funny, I'm always going to be memorable. Every joke coming out of my mouth, mouth doesn't have to be funny. It's definitely going to be relatable. It's going to be based on a current event. But I tell a lot of people, including people I work with, I think I can do comedy. Comedians are becoming like attorneys or a lot of entertainers. They think they can do it. They might be able to do it once or twice, but when yeah. you start going for it for a while, you got to come up with your own material. you got to talk mm -hmm. about your own self. you got to be willing right. to be uncomfortable and test it out with your audience because, trust me, you're, you're going you're gonna to get to a point where you're going to be like, whoa, this shit is really scary, and, you know, the true colors are going to come out. But, you know, if you want to give a shot, you know, Hit an open mic. There's several places. New Way Bar in Ferndale off of uh, Woodward between Nine Mile and 696. Shout out to Paul Pipitone. He runs that room. There's also Gratiot Pub. Charles Hill runs it in uh, 15 Mile in Gratiot. Not too far from here, actually. Yep, yep. Um, then we got Independent Comedy Club in Hamtramck. Uh, we got a few places in Waterford. Uh, you know, Detroit Comedy's coming back. I agree. Uh, oh, Punchline. Shout out to... Ugly Jason Punchline in yep. South Hill. It's another good spot. That's Shout out to Ronnie favorites. Chanel. Is that the old um, duos? No, it's, a, it's up to heel from duo. It's up to heel. Yeah, I believe so. Shout out to Ronnie Chanel. Uh, she's running a spot called Down River Bar and Grill in E Course. Yeah. And there's a lot of places where you could perform your craft for sure. Oh, it's always better to get paid, but you got to start you somewhere. Get, you got to work yes, your dues. You got to start somewhere. Pay your dues. And you got to keep doing what you believe in, what you're doing. I try to do shows at least two, potentially three times a week. If I'm not doing shows, I'm writing materials and working on new songs. It's so always opportunities. Always. Right. Always. Man, we glad to have you here, man. I was we enjoyed this whole set. Appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> man. Um so yeah, uh I'm gonna be hitting the road soon. Yeah, I was just I don't about know if to I say. said it already again, but uh I don't know what order they're going to come in, but Spunky Robinson, shout out to you, well-known comic from the Florida, Orlando, Miami area. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at possibly coming to his room shortly mm -hmm. uh, in Orlando, Florida. There's also New York. There's also Chicago. There's also South Carolina, Texas, and of course, California, as, poss as possible as Philadelphia as well. So, you know, it's going to be happening soon. Uh, vacation does roll over to May. Working automotive. Shout out to Chrysler. So once we get our vacation time rolled over, I'm gonna be hitting the roads very soon. It up. <laughs> very gotta, soon. You gotta do it the right way. Uh, uh, that and that was what I was just about to ask you. Your short term goals and your long term goals, and then say something to your community and our community before you slash. So you, you just okay. did those short term. So always. go ahead and go ahead and hit your long term. Goal. Okay, short term goals always. Uh, find new places that are willing to hire me that I can do a showcase based on the style what I bring to my audience. Mm -hmm. uh, that's happening daily. So shout out to the people that are giving me opportunities and making these uh, pathways happen and uh, bringing much fruition to me. Sure. Long term goals is to be not necessarily famous, but have quite a bit of an audience, a platform. That people are recognizable by my name, the style, what I bring, and the only way I want to bring it. Mm -hmm. I don't truly believe in censorship in comedy, and whether it's good or bad, it's right. still going to be what, what it's going to be. And uh, so, yeah, I'm definitely looking to travel because even though as good as you are at home, just like if re rather you're an entertainer in the rap industry, the rock and roll industry, whatever it is, you have to be willing to go away from home and challenge yourself with a different audiences and we're better to go to those states that I mentioned because it's definitely going to be a challenge and I'm looking forward to that opportunity and banging some heads for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then of course, open the doors. and then of course recording my, uh, my musical platform, <laughs> the parodies. Not everybody that. tells jokes, not everybody does voices, and I guarantee right. not everybody does songs. I'm there, sure there's That's a few out there, them, but I'm doing all three, triple yeah. threat. Take you out like that. <laughs> Now go ahead and say something to our community, your community. Let them know how you how you feel. You know. Yeah. So you know, this is all on the positive, uh, up and coming, and uh, come and check us out. A few places that I named, a few people that I shout out. If you already don't know them, come and check out our rooms. 
and you'll definitely be entertained. You'll definitely enjoy yourself and have a good time for sure. Agree. I like, like sure. I like how he called it rooms. And yeah. <laughs> like, come check out our rooms. Yeah. Oh, we can even do this stuff outside. <laughs> Looking forward to this pop up shop that you have coming up soon. Oh, that's going to oh, yeah, be something. Definitely, the uh, Midwest Comedy Competition. I'm ready for you. Yeah, we definitely making it uh, making it happen. Yeah, cool. We, we definitely want to see that, you yeah, know, the rebirth. Cool. What we call it, you know, so that's something in the works. And oh, yeah. We're going to make it happen. You guys are doing something good here that definitely will branch out to the rest of the community as mm-hmm. well as the United States. And, hey, we're not going just the United I States. Just about to say, I got fans yeah. in England, China. I was just about to say. Not we Russia. Got some... Fuck you, Putin. <laughs> uh, Japan, Mexico. Canada. I've done shows over in Canada, so oh, I look same. forward to coming that's there again. Same. So technically, in a way, I'm considered an international comic now because I went across the borders and have done that as well. <laughs> hey, <laughs> tag that onto that motherfucking checklist. There you go. Well, so we don't know what's next. Well, give me a check, and I'll be there. You want me in Dubai? I'll be there. Get there. And I, we are, we are manifest that shit for sure. Without a doubt. Yeah. So I appreciate the opportunity, DJ Perez. Yeah, yeah. Being on any and everything podcast by Two Kings right here. That's right. Doing something good for the community. Hey, look, you too early for that. You too early for that. Slow down, my brother. Slow down. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Uh, Pete, go ahead and hit it with the fuck you for the week. All right, I'm going to keep it short and simple. This is out of uh, Minnesota. Ooh. Dude named Levi. Now, I would say fuck you to the sheriff department. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the, just the system of uh, Minnesota. Ooh. Now, the dude, Levi, he's a father of a young um, daughter. And he had went to the sheriff department and he got um, a petition for a protective order for, um, you know, his young daughter because it was a well-known pedophile, you know, uh, basically checking out his daughter and kids in the community. So... I mean, I guess he got fed up with it and shit, you know, and my man came too close. So, I mean, this dude beat my man with a shovel and stabbed him with some deer antlers or some uh, moose antlers and shit. I mean, (laughs) he went over the top. But my thing is, they didn't give him and his family that protection that they needed, man. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And it's like, it's fucked up because... If I got to take the law into my own hands to protect my family, I'm going to do that. That's I'm sorry for laughing. It's going to be done. No. But I'm like, this dude, like, you know, man, he went over the fucking top. I mean, that shit outrageous. I mean, no, he shovel. Didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. And he he protected. That. No, he didn't. He the protected his family. Motherfucking moose he protect, he I was protect. trying to figure out where the fuck he got the moose out of. He a hunter. Like the shovel, he I a hunter. understand, but damn. He a hunter. And, you know, my man went to the uh, motherfucking police department. Bloody and all, got on his knees, put his hand behind his back, and he was like, I'm fucking ready to go, because I told y'all, you know, keep this motherfucker away from my kids. And, you know, people got to understand, you have people out in this world, when you fuck with their family, exactly, they not going to take that shit lightly. Exactly. And just because this system and these police entities take that shit lightly, and let people get off and let themselves get off. Mm-hmm. And I say this a thousand times. You fuck with my family. I'll fuck you over. I, uh, must I don't I don't give a fuck what uniform you wear or what badge you hide behind. My family is personal to me. And the love that I have for my family is personal to me. So you might, you know, <laughs> throw it off and, you know, dismiss it. I'm not that kind of sensing where I can do shit like that. You fuck with my family, I'm coming for you. That's a fact. And, you know, so when we hear these stories and, you know, we feel like, you know, people done flipped out. No, you just fuck with the wrong family. I agree. So, you know, people got to be conscious. When people come to you for help and want people, certain people out of their lives and not, you know, fucking around with their family and shit. Because as a man, I'm the protector. And I'm the protector of my wife, my kids, my sister, my mother, you know, my brother. And you fuck with them, it's a problem. So I sacrifice myself for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's a fuck you of the week. Do I get what to do a fuck you of the week too? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what do you, you kill him with? Nigga, shovel. shovel and a motherfucker. Damn. So shout out to Home Improvement <laughs> for providing and purchasing that shovel. I was like, God damn, when I was reading it, I was like, 
the shovel was one thing, and shit, but when I got down to the atlas, <laughs> oh motherfucker! <laughs> hey, you know how outraged you had to be to kill some motherfuckers with some antlers and shit. This shit went on for like fifteen or twenty minutes. Damn. <laughs> yes, you could do a fuck you for the week. I got a couple. Oh, I love of, it. I got a couple different fuck yous. <laughs> fuck you to the winter snow that comes to Michigan. We're in mid March, and we're still getting snow. And I, I told my coworkers I left work and I did a quick joke out of it, so I'll go ahead and do it here. I said, man, fuck this and fuck that snow. I said, I'm taking myself on the regular roads. I'm not even going on the freeways. I don't trust white people, especially ones with pickup trucks and Trump stickers. <laughs> my, other, my other fuck you is for those people that don't want to open their minds and give me the opportunity to work a room, to get paid for a room, because my ass is raw and real, and I bring that uncensored type of comedy. And my other fuck you is for anybody who is either racist, that segregates against any race or culture or whatever their gender or whatever is, because we should all get along no matter what we do, because us as a unified group, we have a lot more uh, knowledge and what we can bring to the table as well as our community. So those are my fuck yous. <laughs> and anybody that hates to try to put me down, trust me, you're not going to burn me. Damn, that was on key with the flames. Damn, bitch. Say, no. So we got this thing. He do a fuck you for the week. I do a hold you up for the week. It's like this yin yang type of thing. Yeah, yeah. We salt and pepper. Heat us all. I'm the pepper. Wow, I'm, a, I'm the good spices. All right, all right. So my shit will be a uh, she. Since we had you up here and you enjoyed the speak freely, man, say what's on your motherfucking mind. Man, shit. what's on my mind? Ugh. Say what's on your mind. That's my hold me up. So I don't. No, that's no. I'm telling oh, you, that, okay. that's what it is. So I'm telling my, I'm telling our people. Oh, okay, okay. To speak freely, man. Say what's on your mind, man. Don't feel the sense of censorship. You feel me? Don't. It's like you. It ain't about hurting nobody's feelings, man. It's about projecting what you gonna hold inside, mm -hmm. and you just saying it out, man. Just watch. It ain't. It ain't even about watch how you say it. It's just, just deliberate your shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and man, keep it real. Man. Keep it true to yourself. Be you. Be loving. You know, be even it. if you gotta pull a motherfucker to the side, yeah. pull him to the side. Hey, come here, motherfucker. come here, Anthony. Let me, let, me, <laughs> let me talk to you outside. Let me let me talk to you outside. Say, say, no. So, man, let's uh, we we sliding on that, and then let's get to this uh, this rocking or dropping. Make sure y'all hit those poles on this rocking or drop it. We got ill wheel on the rocking or drop it. Party pack, ill wheel party pack. This another hit because you gotta hear what he's. Hear what he's talking about. Shut up, bitch, and listen to a boss talk. She can bring up her bills like they my fault. Too many hoes on my dick, you need to hop off. Niggas follow, I'm still ballin' air when I feel like hot sauce. Fuckin' on the run and get them knocked off. I still hold my block down like the rock boss. She got that work with that top, blew my socks off. So 